There you are. Hello. How are you? Okay. If you are tuning in with me today, you are in for another sweet creative treat. Put my apron on, and if you're at home and you have your apron, go ahead and put it on. Make sure you have your canvas. And you see what I painted yesterday. Hey, Miss Ashley, how you doing? I'm good. That's her. <laughs> but anyway, today I'm going to be painting a beautiful rose. And I actually was inspired by a pair of earrings that I wore yesterday. So if you did not see yesterday's video and how I created this, um, I actually stopped at a point because Miss Ashley is going to be one of our online paint sessions. And if you sign up for this class, you will get a cute little headband. It might not be the same exact one, but you will get a cute little headband in the mail um, so that you can add this in uh, with your painting. So without further ado, Please do not uh, forget to like, hey, my sweetie, like this video if you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, thumbs it up. You can share this video. You might not know of any other people on your timeline that's creative, but hey, you never know unless you share. They might love this video too. We're going to be listening to some Sarah Jakes Roberts today, and you all know I always put my two cents in too <laughs> while we listening and just as God moves. So today I want to paint this beautiful rose and I was inspired by a pair of earrings I wore yesterday and I just want to, I wanted to paint that today. Rose is like delicate and I'm not going to do a red rose. I'm going to do a purple and gold rose. So I am going to get this started here. And Sarah, this is about 49 minutes. Hopefully this won't take me 49 minutes. But you can take out your smartphone or if you're on the computer already, click on the share. I'm going to share, copy link. I'm going to send it to my mom. So in other words, you can choose a person to send it to. And I'm also going to share it to my Facebook business and my personal Facebook page. So that is what I'm doing. And I encourage you to choose three different outlets to share. It only takes a moment. Okay, share and share to my mom, share to my Facebook, and it is now shared to live now, exclamation, I like to put some little flower emojis, post, and I'm done. So, we're going to be listening to some Sarah today, like I said, so I'm going to put this on. Don't forget to tune in this Thursday to Painting in a Word. It's going to be amazing. I hope you guys can hear her. And my text begins, it says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his You get two of these canvases in your pay kit. Hey, mommy! See y'all, told y'all you share with somebody. You never know. They might say, I need this moment right now. So I'm just allowing you all to come on in with me today as I'm painting this rose. It's going to be a purple and gold rose that I'm going to paint today. I'm actually going to do it horizontally today. All desire is to be drawn closer to you. 
that this would be a moment that I guess this would be a form of painting in a word and I'm talking over Sarah so I'm gonna be quiet now can y'all hear Sarah please comment let me know if you can hear Sarah that lives can be changed in this atmosphere I believe that sickness can be healed in this atmosphere I believe the blind can see because I recognize that in your presence and in your anointing that those are the types of things that we can expect to take place and so father I am asking that this would be a moment of your glory. A moment of that God's it would look glory past right our now. Fears, that it would look past our insecurities and that it would stand so strong on the inside of us that it would overflow and touch everything connected to us. Hallelujah. Certainly, God, you have used the foolish things of the world and you have used those for your glory. And so, God, I'm asking wherever there is confusion, wherever there is pain, wherever Amen. there is turmoil, that this would be the moment of divine revelation and insight, oh God. And as for me, your vessel, I ask that you would just draw me so close to you that it would not be evident where I end or you begin, but that it would only be you standing here in front of your people. No fear, no anxiety, no nerves, just your anointing, your glory flowing through me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Um, you guys can be seated and be comfortable. I took my daughter to an indoor play place in Denver, and we got the little cards, we loaded the cards up, and we were going from game to game to game. And while we're going from game to game, we won the jackpot in one game, and so we had a lot of tickets, but we were supposed to get a lot of tickets. And then we won some more tickets at another game. And at this point, we're basically bankrolling. We have a lot of tickets. And so I asked the guy who's running around, because the machine isn't spitting out tickets, I asked the guy who's running around. I'm like, you know, we're out here falling out of control, but we don't have our tickets. And the guy told me, oh, the tickets go on the card. And that's when I felt like I had robbed my child from one of the joys of childhood. I don't know about you, but there was something about walking around with that big old cup of overflowing tickets. My God, <laughs> yeah. I feel the anointing right now. Honey, it is the first time that I learned how generous I was. I would see another poor soul struggling on a game, and I would say, you know what, here, take some of my tickets, because God has blessed me so abundantly i would be so excited about the ticket that i didn't even care about the prize there was something about walking around with all of this evidence that i had won and wow. so what i realized is that i was often so excited about the tickets that i didn't even investigate what the prize could be there was something about me celebrating too soon Sometimes we are so consumed with what we got that we never take inventory of how what we got gave us access to something else. It's like when you get into a relationship, you don't just get a person, you now have access to their wisdom and their experiences and their strategies. You didn't just get a church, you got access to the anointing and clarity and vision wow. and focus. Sometimes all we think about is what we got, but what if you dare to think, okay, now this is what I got, but now what do I have access to as a result of what I got? I got a new job, but what do I have access to as a result wow. of that? I have this friendship, but what do I have access to as a result of this connection? Because everything we get gains us access to something else. Yeah. And I wonder how much more seriously we would take what we got when we recognize that it is connected to something that will give us access. Because the reality is that there are some things that we get that we don't necessarily want access to what is connected to them. And at this point in the text, Paul is having an issue with the church of Corinth. They have received Jesus as their savior, they have heard the good news of him being crucified, but they're beginning to celebrate too soon. Paul gets a letter, and in this letter they say, hey, the church that you're trying to establish here is starting to be divided because the people are celebrating too soon. They're 
taking pride in the fact that I was baptized by Paul. I was baptized by Apollos. And so they're beginning to celebrate on the ground level of what God can do in their city. Hmm. Because the reality is that for some of us, we think that the ground level of our relationship with God is just that I received him as my Savior and I'm going to try and do whatever I can to live a life of integrity and righteousness. Might be a little too but bright. I think it's overexposed. Trying to show you guys the shimmer, but it's gold. <laughs> when we receive Christ, we gain access to the It's pretty gold shimmers on here. I gained access gold and white. To anointing. I gained access to authority. I gained access to power. I didn't just receive this. Be blessed, you all. Went back to living my life the way that I lived it before. When I received Christ and then I started feeling depression, I now have authority over depression. Because when I received Amen. Christ, I received power. I received Amen. anointing. And now I don't have to just live my life taking any old thing that comes my way because I received an anointing. I received authority. And Paul recognizes that if you settle for where you are, then you will miss the power of God. I know this is for somebody because I've been waging war with some things that I don't even have to wage war with. The battle has already been won. I had Amen. victory over depression. I had victory over suicidal thoughts. I had victory over lack. I've got mm -hmm. access to God. I didn't just receive him as my savior become a cute little yep. Christian. I got authority when I got connected to God. That's why I'm a part of the kingdom because the kingdom allows me to have authority. I have creativity over things. Hallelujah. I got access. Turn to the person beside you and say, you got access. You got, you got access. access. I know you're worried about that child, but you got access. I know you're worried mm. about that marriage, but you got access. I know you're worried about that money, but you got access. What does that mean? That Thank means God Jesus. can give you some creativity to find a way out of this situation. God can give you some strategy. If you only had you, you would be in trouble. But because Ooh, this is you have really access pretty. to the I wish you all could see God. how beautiful this is, but I think the light is a little that man can't see on this level. And so when I got connected to him, my perspective got wider. I got access. Paul says to the church of Corinth, you about to mess this thing up. Because you think that what you should be proud of is that you got connected. And if you stop there, you'll never see the access that has been granted to you. Corinth is a very important city for the kingdom because Corinth is the, it's on an isthmus in Greece and it has got trade routes and the Syrians and the Egyptians and, and the Jews and the Greeks all come to this place. And so it is important to Paul that what happens in Corinth is taken care of wisely because people recognize that, Paul recognizes rather that the world. going to have a color mixing class course online coming I soon. I feel that it's important to Paul because Paul is kingdom. He's gone into the world. He's trying to color mixing and color meaning class coming soon online. What happens in this city is going to echo throughout all the world. What happens in this period, what happens in this space, what happens in this era, what happens in social Woo! media, what happens in the world, what happens in your sphere of influence is going to echo throughout the world. I got to say Aww, that. Oh, thank you, Mommy. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting me and tuning in and media. just that being lovely people. It's not I'm happy to share. Are, what you demonstrate is going to go throughout all of the world. And so it is important that you take this thing seriously. And as I was studying and as I was praying, I felt like God was saying that maybe there are moments where we take pride in the wrong things. This Corinthian church, Paul has been Assigned with the responsibility. This is like a form of painting in a word. Sarah's giving the word while I'm painting. And the weight of what God wants to do in their life. And so part of the issue is that because of this city being a metropolitan city and because of them having arts and athletes and all of these incredible things that happen in this city, 
that they are used to having something to take pride in. The culture teaches them to have pride. God help them. They have received the news of Jesus, but at this time, there's nothing to really be proud of, and so they have to make up something to be proud of because there are still so many people who doubt that Jesus is the Messiah. And so instead of standing alone and isolated in this knowledge of who Jesus is, regardless of whether or not other people get it, they try to make up something to be proud of. Hmm. They tried to take the glory of God and fit it into the context of human knowledge. Sometimes when we aren't really confident in what God is doing in our life, we try to take what God is doing in our life and translate it into a language ah! that other people can understand so that we can receive the validation from man without having to have the independence of standing and doing what God has called us to do. Wow. God, I got to say that the way I feel it. Paul said that you're going to mess this up if you take what God is doing in your life and try to make it something that man can approve of and that man will applaud over. Where your glory is really going to shine is when you don't care whether or not man validates it or whether or not man understands it. If you celebrate on this level, you'll never get the access to the power of God that's waiting for you. You want man to applaud now or do you want God to be proud later? Because if Amen. you want man to applaud now, then go ahead and I want to please God no matter what I'm doing. What's happening in your life. But if you would dare to wait on the Lord to finish what he's doing in this place, then the culture will come to you. That's what I'm saying. The yes, people Lord. are trying to make God fit in the culture. And Paul says that if you would stand and do what I tell you to do, then the culture will come to you. I feel that for somebody. You don't have to make God fit in the culture. God says I can make culture come to you if you would stand flat footed in who I've called you to be and what I've called you to do I'll make the industry fit around who you are I'll make the job fit around who you are Woo! the businesses fit around who you are don't go into the culture make the culture come to you make the culture wonder what's going on over there make the culture wonder what got down on the inside of that boy he should be sad coming from where he came from he should be broken coming from where he came from but he He's got joy that man can't take away. What in the world is happening to him? I didn't come to the culture. The culture came to me. You better ask somebody. I didn't have to do nothing but be who God called me to be. Yes, Lord. And the culture will come to me. Because at the end of the day, you cannot influence a culture that you are desperate to be a part of. And Paul is trying to tell the church in Corinth, I need you to influence the culture. So you can't look like the culture and speak like the culture and influence the culture. You got to be in the culture. But you got to be so sure of what you carry that even if the culture doesn't get it, that you don't start bending and start compromising so that the culture can understand the power of God is going to draw the culture. Yes. The power of God is going to make them wonder what's happening down on the inside of you. The power of God is going to have them coming up and asking questions. It's going to be the power. Don't celebrate right now. Don't celebrate right now. Wait until the power gets finished. Wait until the glory gets finished. My subject for this message is foolish glory foolish glory. The kind of glory that the world can't possibly understand. The kind of glory that you would just have to be me to recognize. Foolish glory. And so, because the church of Corinth is breathing in the air of the city, Paul has to have what I would call a come to Jesus moment. I know y'all aren't as country as I am, praise the Lord. But when we used to get in trouble, my mother said, we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. I don't even know, now that I'm saying it out loud to thousands of people, what that really means. But basically, it means we're going to see if you can withstand all of that foolishness in the face of Jesus. <laughs> and 
So Paul starts off his come to Jesus meeting by letting the people in Corinth know basically that you're not the best to ever do it. Verse 26 says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things. So, Paul says, Oh, this is pretty. In order I look up and see it on the camera, I'm like, wow. Sometimes when you're sitting so close, pause this real quick. You need to recognize the distance. She about to say something about distance. <laughs> And I'm about to say something about it too. Distance. Sometimes when you're sitting so close up on something, you can't really tell what it's really looking like just yet. You can't really tell um, really the beauty of it because you're so close on it, you're so hands on that you can't see the progress. You can't see what it actually looks like. So when I take a moment to back up and actually see it on the camera here this is really beautiful but as i'm sitting up close on i'm like man is this really going the way i think it is <laughs> and you know what sometimes things may not go the way we thought or the way we planned it but it's okay as long as god's will is done that's what we have to allow to be well with our soul hmm, well with our soul stay tuned for thursday <laughs> Back to Sarah. Between where you are and who God is. Because these people have been placed in positions and placed in atmospheres and environments where they are surrounded by people who are their peers. And because they are surrounded by people who are their peers, it can be very easy to forget that you barely made it in the room. Mm, 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 mm. I know that it's anti-culture, right, and counterculture to tell you that you're not the best to ever do it. But I do have an assignment this morning. And I think it is important for us to recognize that we're not the best to ever do it. But there was a but God that was hovering over our lives. Oh, yeah. You see, because when you start achieving and you start accomplishing, you can start to believe that no one is better than me at this thing. No one could possibly come and take my place. But Paul needs the people at Corinth to know that you're not the best to ever do it. God chose you because you Hallelujah. started off a fool. I know you don't look like a fool right now. I know you didn't got yourself together. I know you didn't got, you didn't got all dressed up and got all cute. But I need you to remember that before you were sitting in the high places, before you were sitting amongst kings and queens, before you made your way to this city, I want to remind Never you. Never have I ever thought that I I will be sitting here doing this all through high school, elementary school. I know I love art and I know I love dance, but man. I chose you because no one would believe that a person like you could make it to where you made it from. You are not the best to ever do it. God is the best to ever do it. And he messed around and breathed on your life. And when he breathed on your life, I set you in a room with kings. I set you in a room you don't have no business in. I want you to take 10 seconds. And remember the distance between where you are and where God found you. I want you to take a minute and remember I was a fool. I was drunk and out of my mind. No, no, no. No, no, no. I wasn't drunk on alcohol, but I was drunk on things of this world that did not, that does not, will not ever matter. But I need somebody who recognizes this is foolish glory over my life. This ain't the kind of glory you hustle up on. This ain't the kind of glory that you can purchase. This is the kind of glory when he uses a wretched person like me. I'm not the best to ever do it. There are people who are smarter than me. Yes. There are people who are wiser than me. Yes. There are people who deserved it more than I did. But you kept this air in my lungs. Woo! Sometimes you need to remember that you a fool with it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a fool with it, baby. I'm a fool with it. I didn't do everything the right way. Life for me hadn't been no crystal stair. But for some reason, God kept putting me in position. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to create Hallelujah. a little distance. Thank you, Jesus. I know when you go on social media, Thank you'll get you, the Jesus. likes, you'll get the praise, you'll get the attention. I know your Thank people you, think you have it all together, but I want to talk to the fool that's down on the inside of you because God doesn't want that thing that impresses everyone else. God wants that thing that makes you feel like a fool, that makes you wonder, God, how could you choose me? How? And as I am, God, how could you use me as you I can't keep breathing in the air of this city that makes me believe I'm better than I really am. That makes me believe I should walk around with my chest all puffed out when I know that it was really just you. God, I want to remind your people of the distance between who they are and ultimately who you are. Because this church, the church of Corinth, is about to mess it all up by taking pride in where they are now. And if you take too much pride in where you are now, then it doesn't leave any God, any room for him to take you to where he wants you to be. If you don't know, now you know. This is not no ordinary painting channel. <laughs> so you gotta wake up every morning and remind yourself that I'm a fool. You gotta wake up every morning and remind yourself I'm still broken. You gotta wake up every morning and say, God, there's still something for you to do down on the inside yes. of me. I may have the job, I may have the car, but God, if I don't have you, none of this will be around. Because all of this is a result of what you saw yes. in me when I didn't see nothing in myself. Paul says, the only reason why God chose you for this job, for this season, for this city, for this church is because it would be foolish to the world. And the only problem when you start doing well is that your results no longer become foolish to the world. And so there's got to be something down on the inside of you that knows no matter what the world sees now, I know where this thing all started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know where this thing all started. I know that it shouldn't be me. And so Paul has to remind the church at Corinth, just like I'm begging you to remember where this thing all started. It didn't start with where you are now. No. Nope. It's been almost it a year with, the fullest with painting in a word. Cried out to God. Whew. It was a fool. Down and this is not even painting in a word, but it is. Just gave up and said, God, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And it was because of that moment of surrender that God was able to do things that eyes hadn't seen and ears hadn't heard through your life. But it started when you just didn't mind being a fool. So he has to remind the church that God chose the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wisdom of the world. And so God is saying to the church of Corinth in this moment that you exchange your foolishness for my foolishness. That there are some things that we consider foolishness that the world doesn't really consider foolishness. No. But God says, I want to position you in such a way that now the world thinks it's foolish, but me and you know it's wisdom. <laughs> the world thinks it's foolish that you would quit your nine to five to pursue your purpose, but me and you call it wisdom. 
the church thinks it's foolish that you would create the kind of art that has a conscience that will change the world when everyone else is bouncing their heads at things that don't make any sense, but you and God think it's wisdom. God says, if you would give me your foolishness, I'll give you my foolishness. And if you would take on my foolishness, then we could do something that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. You see, the problem with us is that sometimes we don't want to exchange his foolishness for our foolishness. But we didn't want to produce things that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. And yet the only way that we can produce things that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard is if we are connected to someone who is higher and above all of the earth. And so God, what I need more than anything is to understand what you were calling foolishness in this season. Because right now, I know what the world accepts, but I don't want to just do what the world accepts. I want to do what is foolish to the world, but it's wisdom in your eyes. Because when I do what is wisdom in your eyes, that's when I have power. That's when I have creativity. That's when I have strategy. It may not make sense to the world, but all I got to know is that it's wisdom in your eyes. I want, God told Noah, I want you to build an ark. It's not even raining. It looked foolish to the world, but it was wisdom in the sight of God. God will give you advance notice about where the world is headed. That's why you don't have time to get caught up in what the world is accepting, because God has called you to be next. God has called you to blaze a trail into what I'm doing now. And so if you can get connected with me, don't celebrate on the base level ask me what i'm doing now because if you ask me what i'm doing now it's really going to be next in the world god you got to help me to say that the way i feel it in my spirit what god is doing now hasn't even touched down in the earth what we see in the earth is what god was doing yesterday i'm doing a new thing in this world right now and all i need is someone who doesn't mind looking like a fool right now because i feel like it's about to rain i feel like i need someone who doesn't mind building an ark right now. I know Need somebody who don't mind building, building a shipping container ark studio now. I hear God saying it's about to rain. I feel that prophetically for somebody. I don't know who you are, but God has been telling you to do something in this world that doesn't even make sense for the world you live in. And I hear God saying it doesn't make sense now because it's going to make sense when it starts raining. It's going to make sense when the world starts going through a drought. It's going to make sense when the industry starts getting hungry God's got something for you now high above the heavens that hasn't even touched the earth but I'm preparing you now for what's going to happen next in the earth God says I need people who don't mind being a bridge between heaven and earth I need people who don't mind hearing it from heaven before you see it in the earth. Who don't mind acting like heaven's got something that's about to touch down on the earth. I don't know what's happening, but if I hear about another bombing, if I hear about another place of worship being set on fire, for some reason they are setting war on faith. And God says, I've got a remedy that's coming from heaven. i got an answer that's coming from heaven. They're trying to tear it down before I can build it up. And I just need about two or three people who don't mind starting that nonprofit, who don't mind starting that book who don't mind going back to school because when this thing touches the earth demons are going to tremble when this thing touches the earth darkness is going to have to back up i need some people who don't mind being a bridge I got to get my circle tight. I got to get my mind right. Why? You don't see it yet, but something is coming down the pipeline. I got a divine connection that has let me know. That the hey, divine God, connections. That's that a painting and a word title. Words, but the kingdom will be advanced. I got a word from heaven that if I don't write the book, the world won't change. I got a word from heaven. I don't know who you are, but I hear God saying it's go time. 
I hear God saying that I need you to take it seriously. I hear God saying that I'm not playing about what I'm doing in the earth. I hear evil getting louder. That's all right. The kingdom is going to get louder too. Hey. The kingdom is, I wish I had some kingdom people in this place who could just go out for 10 seconds. Can somebody just let hell know for 10 seconds that you will not have the final say over my marriage. You oh, will not have the final say over church. You will not have the oh, final Lord. say over the criminal justice system. I'm on the way. I'm this the message way. is from I'm a year ago. My anointing is on a the way. A year my ago. My music is on the way. My film is on the way. My business is on the way. I got an answer for that evil. I got an answer for that depression. I got an answer for those generational curses. Jesus. I got an answer for that. God gave me the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I don't have time to celebrate. I got work to do. Hmm. Paul knows that if the church of Corinth starts celebrating right now, then they will miss the work that is yet to do. And I just wanted you to know this early Sunday morning that it is not time for you to start celebrating and basking in your achievements. I know social media wants to make you think you have arrived. Baby, if you're still here, there's still work for you to do. You ain't arrived nowhere. You still got work to do. There's still homeless people all up and down. The yes. Streets. Is somebody right now being beat in the inside of their home? Somebody's locked up right now that shouldn't even be in prison. You don't have time to celebrate. You got work to do. You don't have time to look like the world. We got a kingdom to build. You still, you still got work to do. So you got to work out whatever's happening on the inside of you. Because it's just a distraction from what you need to do outside of you. I'm going to have to go ahead and go to counseling. I'm going to have to go ahead and go to rehab. Because what's happening on the inside of me is just distracting me from laying hold of what I'm supposed to do outside of me. And the kingdom needs help. The kingdom needs help. It's not enough for me to have my ministry. It's not enough for the potter's house to be standing. The kingdom still needs help. It's a church on every yeah. corner. Good. We need one on every corner yeah. because we need some help around here. We need some help raising up these children. We need some help raising these families up. We need some help starting these businesses. Yeah. We still, we still got work to do. And so Paul tells this the church really of Corinth, the only way this thing is going to work <laughs> is to step out of what makes your flesh feel like you have arrived. And instead, step into who you are in Jesus. I'm going to read it like Paul wrote it, and then we're finished. He says that no flesh should glory in his presence. That means if it makes you feel good, it doesn't do anything to him. No flesh should glory in his presence. If it strokes your ego, if it makes you feel pride, if it makes you feel like you're the booger with the sugar and ain't nobody ever do it the way to that you do it, you don't have sugar. <laughs> Hallelujah. He who glories, 
Thank you, Jesus. Let him glory in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God says you can glory, but glory in who you became for me. Yes. Glory in what we did together. Glory in what the world called foolish, but you and I called wisdom. <coughs> God, if the world never celebrates it. God, if the world never acknowledges it. But you are somewhere saying that you got the glory. <laughs> That's all that I need. God, if nobody ever sees the video. God, if nobody hey! ever sees the book. <laughs> right now, they said it, said it shows me that zero people are watching. But guess what? I know that God is watching. And I am here to please God, to do what God has shown me to do. And I will keep on going. That is not just an idea. That is not just a See, ministry. Sorry. That is not just a book. That is Thank glory you. found on the inside Car of you. Two. That is God pouring out. I might have missed that comment earlier. And God's trying to get that glory. He's trying to get that glory out of you. I'm trying to get that power I put down on the inside of you. I'm trying to get that anointing that I placed down on the inside of you. It's not just a gift. It's not just a talent. That's my glory I placed down on the inside of you. And God will let people walk away from you. God will let jobs break off of you until the glory starts pouring out of you. I got to make you desperate for that glory to come out. I got to make you hungry for that glory to come out. And you have to be willing to look foolish for the glory to flow. God, God, I just want the glory that you placed out on the inside of me to come out by any means necessary. By any means necessary. I feel this prophetically and then we're going to pray. God has been making someone believe. The enemy has been making someone believe that the idea that they think came from God, because they're not even for sure that it came from God. They think the idea came from God. I know this is prophetic. I don't know who you are. Denver, hear me. The enemy has been waging war on that idea because that idea is God's glory in your life. And God wants you to recognize that you don't have to wonder if the idea came from him, that the reason why you cannot shake that thing off, the reason why you cannot let that idea go is because it is the thing that is going to bring glory onto the earth. And I dare you to start taking authority. You believe in God, but you don't believe in your authority over wickedness. You don't believe over your authority over anxiety. And I dare you to open your mouth and to start proclaiming your authority over your fear. I have authority over my anxiety. I have authority over my insecurity. Satan, I rebuke you. You can't have this idea. Satan, I rebuke you. You can't have that child. You can't have this book. I'm going to produce it by any means necessary. And I hear God saying that when you produce it, that the glory is going to be so evident that it's gonna break that insecurity off of your life. That it's gonna break that anxiety off of your life. Mm -hmm. God says you don't have to fight it, just let the glory do the talking. Let the glory do the walking. I wanna pray with you. I wanna pray with you. Can you stand with me as we close out? You don't have to go now. It's not the time to go. I feel like glory is going to touch down all over this place. This is going to be a very personal altar call. But it is important that if you felt this message and that if you feel like this altar call is for you, that you dare to come down because it's going to break pride and it's going to break ego. If you know that you have been glorying in the kind of things that God doesn't even care about. I've been glorying in the type of things that I could never even take into the presence of God. But I want to have the kind of glory that allows me to stand.
stand in the presence of my Savior. What we're really talking about is having spiritual integrity. Amen. Because sometimes I can be one way on one side of my spirit. I can be one way in the spirit and I can be another way in the flesh. In the flesh, I'm a boss. In the flesh, I got ego. In the flesh, I got pride. In the flesh, I got fans. In the flesh, I got groupies. In the flesh, everybody wants to be me and I kind of glory in that. But in the spirit, I feel broken. I feel lost. I feel like a fool. I feel like I need God. But sometimes we can't take that version of ourselves that boasts in our flesh into the presence. And I hear God saying, I want to have a collision. I want to have a collision with those two versions of who you are. And I want the same person I see to be the same person that walks throughout this earth. I want you to have spiritual integrity. When you don't make people believe one thing about you that's not even true. When on the inside you know, man, I'm a mess and I'm a work in progress. Yes. I denounce the spirit of pride over my life. Yes. I denounce it. Denounce I denounce it. I know it's not in the air to denounce it. I know it's not on social media to denounce it. And if I'm honest, I've been breathing in the air of this city. And I'm starting to boast in things and I still feel empty on the inside. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the kind of person who says, God, I'm honestly still a fool. And you need relationships and churches and books and environments that constantly remind you how much work you still have to do. Listen, not to shame you, I'm not talking shame, but something that makes you feel so small that you need a great God. Something that makes you feel so small. I, God, I still need you. God, I still want you. And it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've gone through. It doesn't even matter what you have accomplished. All that matters to him is that you can still find a foolish way to get to his glory. I'm still foolish. And you can still use me. Denver, I see you. L.A., I see you. I want you to lift your hands and surrender. Surrender is my favorite way, my favorite position. It's really the way of saying, God, you got me. God, that word got me. I didn't even think that I was coming to receive a message about who I was. I thought I was going to receive a message. That Thank you all for tuning in today. I will be live again, Lord willing, tomorrow at 2.45 p.m. And you are welcome to sit and paint along with me. Don't forget to share this message, uh, share this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you do not miss when we go live or any of our premiered videos. Um, I love how this turned out. And she is for sale. Royalty Rose. <laughs> I don't know. She is for sale, but... God bless you all. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to finish this video out and I will see y'all tomorrow.